So at the top, I started with life of the age to come. Here's something you can help your friends with. Eternal life is a fog translation. It's vague. It's not wrong, but it's foggy. It's the life of the age to come. That's what that actually means. And it comes out of Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. Daniel 12, 2 is a wonderful verse. I've said this, Daniel 12, 1, 2, and 3 is a master Bible key, particularly Daniel 12, 2, right? But all three verses there, because it tells you exactly what's going to happen at that time. Four times there, it says at that time, at that time, at that time, at that time, and people still don't seem to get it straight. So what happens in Daniel 12, 2? It says that many of those who are sleeping, multitudes of people who are sleeping in the dust of the ground, that tells you, your children will love this, tells you what they're doing, sleeping, right, sleeping, and where they're doing it, in the dust of the ground. I mean, is this hard? Why didn't I learn this in the Church of England? I never heard of this. Anyways, that's Daniel 12 too. Many of those who are sleeping currently in dust land, effectively, that's where Adam came from, wasn't it? He's made of the dust of the ground. You go back to the dust of the ground, Many of them will wake up, some to the life of the age. That's what the Hebrew says. You need your umbrella in the front row when I do the Hebrew here. Chaye olam. The chaye olam. You need to practice your Johann Sebastian Bach and get that right. Don't say chaye or some horrible thing. And the Hebrew speakers are wincing. Chaye olam. The life of the age. And the rabbi said, if it's the life of the future age, it's life forever. Now that... Phrase then, the life of the age, mistranslated really, poorly translated as eternal life, is 41 times in the New Testament. They loved that. They said, there's a great verse. So 41 times in the New Testament you have eternal life. It's the life of the future age. That tells you then there is an age to come, doesn't it? All of that has been overwhelmed in the minds of your friends there when they think of going to heaven to play a harp on a pink cloud. So you say to your friends jokingly, why do you want to go to heaven, Jane, when Jesus won't be there? What? Oh, that might get me thinking. You've got to jolt these people into activity. It doesn't always work. They may turn on you in a fury. How dare you contradict my pastor, they'll say. That's the chayi olam, the life of the age to come in Daniel 12. And it does say later in that verse that those people who come up in that first resurrection, which is at the parousia of Jesus, parousia, that's the second coming. I use the word deliberately. There's only one future second coming, no pre-tribulation rapture. That's a myth. It doesn't exist. There's only one future parousia. So when you come up in that resurrection at the parousia, the second coming, your face is going to shine like the sun in its strength, Daniel says. What? You are God's stars in training. Now, don't get big-headed now. If your face is going to shine like the sun in its strength, isn't that rather amazing? And you can say to your audiences here, you're beautiful people now. We appreciate what you look like. But wait a minute. You haven't seen anything yet. Your face is going to shine like the sun in its strength. And what's more, you then are going to supervise the world. Wouldn't you like to be able to tell people now, put that tank away. Don't build a tank. Don't think of having a gun to shoot another person. Forget that. You can't do that now. They'll gobble you up. But in that future kingdom, you'll have the power to do it. I think that's exciting. Much more interesting than playing a harp in the clouds where Jesus won't be. So you've got a lot of work to re-educate. What about immortality? 2 Timothy 1.10. I like this one. 